Uh, hi, welcome to Pencil Bank in our interview with Fingerprint Card CEO. Uh, so I'm, I have Ted Hansen with me. Hi, Ted. Hey, nice to be here. Yeah, thank you for coming and talk to us. Um, you released Q1 earnings now this morning. Yes, uh, that's and I, I think I think there are puts and takes in it. Uh, but if we start just talking about the the status of the market and especially the mobile phone market in China, which is the one that you that have caused trouble for you, uh, and try to kind of sense what's going on. If we start with the consumer, where is the consumer in now that co- that the country has reopened, etc. Yeah, of course you're right. It has been a, a painful journey the last year with the with the smartphone market, especially in China after the COVID lockdowns. And um, we see after the reopening, uh, definitely there is uh, more positivism and there is uh, an increased spending. Uh, and also uh, some of our end customers are finally actually increasing forecast for some models uh, so that is a that is a strong sign it's still you know some models from some oems but uh, it's been a while since we saw increased forecast or what we call them upsides when it comes to volume and, and we start to see that now and it's mainly triggered by the domestic demand increasing mm-hmm. so you would say that there is there is as you came out a new year or as as china came out a new year did you, I mean, do you hear anecdotes of people coming back to stores, etc.? Yeah, now China is um, not only open, it's actually trying to uh, lure back, you know, global companies uh, and expats and, and uh, tourism and, and so on. Uh, so it's a, it's a very different tone in China from authorities and uh, and uh, I, I would say that the Chinese economy, uh, you know, might very well be one of the stronger ones this year, uh, looking at it from a global point of view. Uh, so we see that the, um, the country is, is uh, you know, open and people are much more positive, not only, you know, in general, if you look at our own staff, we can see that, you know, everyone is more positive and, and consumption is increasing and, uh, and travel is back and everything is open and so on. So, so it's a, it's a positive development recently. Mm-hmm. And you mentioned that some of the OEMs have actually increased the forecasts. If you look at the next step in in the value chain, you look at the the module houses and the distributors. Where are they in all this? You mentioned the the continuous destocking in the report. Yeah, uh, you're right. So some OEMs are reporting upsides, or increased forecasts, and and that's a, a real joy to see, of course. And uh, when it comes to the module houses and the distributors, they are living with very slim margins. And as the cost of capital increased and and cash flow is a concern, they have been very reluctant to sit on inventories. And that is why we see these very low inventory levels now among distributors and uh, and module houses. In addition to that, uh, some of the smaller module houses, I would say, uh, have a questionable financial situation. Uh, so we, we also see that some OEMs are transferring volume to uh, uh, changing around in their supply chain and, and moving volumes to more stable module houses. And, and I believe that is also one of the reasons why the distributors are a bit concerned to, uh, uh, to place orders uh, in advance of getting them uh, basically from the module house. Having said that, it doesn't really impact us, you know. In, in large projects, we are typically supplying uh, our sensors to multiple module houses that share the total volume to the OEM. Uh, so so we, we don't really have mm-hmm. any impact of this. It's more that more of our volume goes to one or two module houses instead of three. But, but it, it, of course, impacts the supply chain and, and the distributors and so on. And if we talk about pricing, because pricing, you mentioned pricing pressure also in, in the report. And I assume that while you have this destocking and you're also destocking your inventories, uh, then you have a pricing pressure. Do you, do you expect for this to abate once you're out of this? And, and is there a chance to bounce back or, or do you expect the lower level to be set? Yeah, so um, there's a couple of factors here. Uh, the first one is that 
we and, and our competitors, we all built inventories when this sudden demand disappeared, you know, a year ago. And at that time, the foundry pricing was relatively high uh, because there was a, it was a supply constraint situation. And uh, uh, this is now being um, sold out by us and, the, and competitors. At the same time, the foundry situation is quite different. They are now actively looking for business. Uh, so the current price to produce new wafers has gone down. And uh, the earlier that you manage to clean your inventory, the faster you will be able to use newly bought uh, wafers or, or sensors, you know, silicon, which you have uh, purchased at a lower price. So sitting on a lot of inventory, it, it doesn't only, you know, mean that you have tied up a lot of cash. It also means that you are going to have to live with a worse margin for a longer period of time. And, and based on our understanding, uh, we are, you know, among the better ones in this industry when it comes to inventory. And as we have said before, we expect we will go back to normal inventory levels uh, in uh, by middle or in Q3 of this year. And, and then uh, to a larger extent, we will start using new wafers, which has a much lower cost uh, right now with the, with the foundry market situation. That will help us to get back to, to better margins in mobile. And of course, over time, uh, I think everyone expects that there will be a consolidation. Uh, and uh, once that has happened, uh, I, I think margins will go back to more historical levels on capacity fingerprint sensors. Uh, so uh, it's going to take a, a bit longer time, but over time, yes, I agree that uh, the margins will improve in capacity fingerprint sensors for mobile phones. So, so what we're talking about is, is not necessarily only ASPs for the sensors themselves, but more of a price cost situation where the spread between the two will improve and hence the gross margins will, margin will go up. Yeah, I, actually, I think it's realistic that the ASPs will go up slightly as uh, as inventory is depleted, and definitely the cost of acquiring new silicon ha has gone down. But of course, you know the the foundry business or foundry industry is is uh, bullish about the second half of this year that the demand will come back. There's a lot of expectation that the smartphone will be back to growth the second half. So foundry pricing is is you know, very dynamic. It's based on on, on supply and demand, of course. Uh, but the balance between uh, ASP and foundry pricing will come back to a more level, more normal ratio over time. That I'm I'm certain of. Mm -hmm. If we change tack a bit and we talk about the in-display sensors, so so you got your first. Uh, volume order, uh, and now you've got the second volume order just announced. Tell us a little bit more about where you stand there and, and, and um, what's going on. Do you expect more and, and how is pricing on in display sensors? Yeah, we got uh, the first customer volume order in the uh, in end of last year, and we had a second customer launching uh, in in the first quarter. Uh, we have received several orders from both of these customers, so it's actually not a second order as such, it's a second OEM launching with our under display technology. Uh, and this is of course still early days for our under display business, uh, we will continue to grow. We have multiple projects running with, with multiple OEMs that we expect will materialize in business during this year. Uh, so we are looking um, uh, in this uh, at this in a in a positive way. We are, you know, having the traction we would like to see. It takes time to take market share. It takes time to go through the qualification, and it takes time to replace competition. But we are progressing according to our plan. And uh, previously, we have said that optical fingerprints represent roughly one third of the volume uh, and capacity fingerprint sensors are roughly two thirds of the volume and that they are comparable in value. And I think that is still true. Uh, so meaning that, you know, uh, the ASP, if you do the math, it's in the magnitude of factor two compared to capacity today. Okay, okay. And, and you have started to ship the order you got uh, back in, in, in December, right? Of course, yes, sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 
moving on to PC. So PC PC grew by 100% in the quarter, but it was also exactly a quarter of the sales for 2022. What is a usual year for PC? You were talking about lumpiness on the call. Yeah. So how should I view this? We are still uh, having a, a large part of the business with uh, with uh, one specific OEM. And the, how they order and in uh, uh, the frequency of the order and so on will have a significant impact on one quarter business. Uh, having said that, we are well on track with our plan to win market share with existing customers. And also we are adding more customers. So we are entering new segments with existing customers. We are increasing our market share with existing customers and we are adding new customers. In addition to that, we are also going to uh, start selling the complete solution, including our own MCU. All of these factors will help to drive both the revenue, but also the, um, what do you want to call that? The stability of sales per quarter and it will be less bouncy. Uh, so on, on the PC side, I'm very happy with the progress. I'm very happy with where we are. We are well on track of uh, you know, achieving our goal to become the global number one in uh, biometrics for PC. Uh, I would say that we are, we are following our plan quite well there. So mm -hmm. we expect to see increased uh, revenues this year, of course, compared to last year, as we have said before. Yeah, yeah. And looking at access, uh, I mean, there's a lot of talk about access as well. And it's, it's, if I remember right, China is growing. The rest of the world is is declining in terms of access. Uh, but you also spend a lot of money on on R and D, or lots of efforts at least on on R and D in in mm -hmm. access. And you mentioned that separately. Uh, yeah. Tell us a little bit more on what's what's happening in access. Yeah. So once again, um, I think that the they saw the quarterly uh, comparison of access business compared to the first quarter in 2022 and you saw that the access rest of the world actually had a had a decrease in in this year uh, that does not represent the demand and uh, the pipeline we have uh, in access rest of the world i would say that that part is is growing quite well so we have said before that pc and access together with under display are the segments that we expect will grow the fastest. And that is still very true. And we are making good progress in what we call access rest of the world. And there's a lot of work to be done there, uh, both in terms of market creation, business development, uh, to uh, educate uh, customers to understand the convenience, the security that we can add with the biometrics, but also uh, a lot of room for innovation and development. So if you think about it, some of these applications that we are going after, for example, let's look at remote control specifically. They are typically uh, using very, very small MCUs. They have a low cost and uh, they would uh, also like to have a cheap fingerprint sensor, of course, uh, but we need to combine that a small sensor that can can be uh, where the algorithm can be executed on a small MCU that can deliver a good biometric performance. So there is a lot of room to us to, to tailor our solution towards these new access applications. We also see customers are asking for specific requirements. For example, they want to have secure element in the access solution. They want to be FIDO compliant and so on and so on. So we're spending a lot of effort now on uh, access development and a lot of that is done together with customers so we are working together with customers in creating great access solutions now with biometrics and of course that is helping us to be the world leader but it's also creating stickiness with the partner since we are doing this together for the customers uh, but it's it consumes engineering resources and and it's a, it's a big focus area now in the company mm -hmm. And and on payments, I mean, payments is still small, uh, but this still gives a contribution and maybe more than I thought. Uh, and I know that some of your competitors are talking about it taking off as we speak. And you mentioned you mm -hmm. have two more commercial launches coming imminently or, or in the near future. So 
tell us a little bit about the progress that you're doing in payment. Yeah, we are very happy about our position when it comes to our offering and when it comes to our partners partners and and uh, we are confident that we have captured the vast majority of the volume and launches so far that that has happened in the industry and uh, in order for this to take off there needs to be several players uh, so we welcome you know healthy competition we are not afraid of that and uh, i would say that we are now we announced uh, in in the last quarterly report we spoke about the collaboration we're doing with um, with Infineon to create a, 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 a turnkey solution. This kind of initiatives is really what is needed to drive what we call tier twos, the fintechs, the smaller banks that want to be early with biometrics. So we will continue helping the market to take off by providing high quality, easy to use turnkey solutions uh, and and uh, you know that is our role in in this ecosystem. So we are you know looking at uh, very positive on on the development here. We see there is more traction uh, also in new G regions. We expect more regions will launch commercial cards this year. But as you said, for us it is still uh, a small volume, uh, relatively speaking. Even though we have shipped one million units, for us it's 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 uh, you know still limited volume. Uh, and we are definitely looking forward to scaling this business with the partners. And as I said now a couple of times, we have the solution ready. We are fully ready to support the takeoff here, and and we are eager to you know see it happening now. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you if you put all this together, I mean, sales outside of capacitive sensors for smartphone OEMs was thirty four percent of sales in in Q one. You were talking about 30% in Q4, and, and the target is for 45% at the end of the year. Where does where does capacitive OEM or capacitive mobile capacitive sensors to mobile phone manufacturers fit into this? Because on the one hand, you're talking about the recovery uh, in that, and that's the, still the majority of the volume in in your business. So how does this hang together? Yes, um, definitely uh, the numbers in Q1, you know, for mobile capacity are not the numbers we would like to see the rest of the years. And as we have said, we have already firm orders that we have confirmed for the second quarter that is above the Q1 total sales. So we are going to see growth in the second quarter. And a lot of that is, of course, coming from mobile getting back to more normal levels. Having said that, we uh, mobile is, is a huge volume business it's an important business for us and, and it is our biggest business today but we expect that the under display is going to grow significantly in this year as we launch with more customers uh, we will see all the effort that is going into the pc will pay off quarter over quarter as more customers launch as we get into more segments as the attach rate increases and the same with uh, access as the projects that we're working on materialize we expect to see good growth there as well and that is how we expect to to achieve this 45 percent of the revenue uh, by end of this year uh, and of course payment is also expected to grow but like i said before i think in this year we expect a faster growth in in access pc and under display than than payment but they will all be growing uh, in, uh, in by end of this year compared to the mobile business even if mobile gets back to more normal normal levels so to say mm -hmm. but just uh, so so just to be clear and kind of repeating what you said but mm. but in your assumption of 45 percent there is still growth in in mobile capacity you still assume that that will grow and that then the other segments will grow faster the mobile capacity uh, definitely there must be a growth compared to q1 numbers uh, definitely yes uh, I, I i guess that is what you refer to mm -hmm, mm -hmm. with that I, I thank you very much for coming here to talk to us and i hope to speak to you soon thank you so much for having me thank you